James Holder for IFL TV in association with Matt Jim Marbell. With me, I've got Eddie Hearn. We're in Leeds today. He's just announced the return of the Leeds Warrior. How are what you, has happened to your Barnet? I thought we looked all right. This is my three hours on the train, Barnet. It's a proper long make... French crop. It is. You know it's I mean? old school. Yeah. It's old school. But do you know what it is? It needs product. Once I flip it up. Oh, they look unbelievable with a bit of product. That's what I was thinking. Something in my eye. Yeah, really good, mate. Really good. good. Um, loads going on. Loads going on, obviously. Um, and here today, talk about our July 30th card. I think probably the strongest card we put on from top to bottom uh, this year on Sky Sports 1. Um, As a non-PPV card? Non-PPV. Yeah. You like it, Yeah, I like it, yeah. Um, and excited, you know, I think Warrington Highlands a great fight. I've got a lot of time for Paggio and, um, and Pascal Collins. I think, you know, obviously coming off the back of the Gary Russell defeat, he wants to come and, and beat Warrington and fight for his own world title. I think Luke Campbell against Arginis Mendez for the WBC silver title is a fantastic fight. Arginis Mendez, former IBF super featherweight champion. It's a fight that's going to tell us a lot about where Luke Campbell is. You know, I think he's improving a lot with Jorge Rubio. Must he, win for Campbell? Yeah. Well, a lot of these fights are must. When you talk about must win, must win for what? You know, must win to go on and fight for a world title? Yes, 100%. You know, must win to continue your career? No. But the level that we want Luke Campbell to box at and the level he wants to box at, 100% must win. And it will tell us a lot about where he is. You know, he dealt with Gary Sykes well for the Commonwealth title. Now he's got to deal with a world-class fighter in Arginius Mendes. Um, Tommy Coyle against Tyrone Nurse for the British light welterweight title. And I'm going to continue calling it the light welterweight title because I can't call it a super lightweight title. I just think it's muggy. Um, I think it's a great fight. You know, Tommy's up. I think he'll be more comfortable at like welterweight. But Tyrone is just impressing me more and more all the time now. Mm. And um, I asked him a question at the press conference. Are you changing your style? Because a lot of people, when Tyrone Nurse was coming through, no one really wanted to, to work with him as much because they felt he was boring. Mm. But now you look at his recent fights, they've been really entertaining. And I think, of course, style's gel. But I think he, he likes to come and fight now. I think against Tommy Coyle, He'll, he'll want to do exactly that. And I think Tommy, as we know, will want to do exactly that. And that's a big all Yorkshire derby on the bill. And, you know, Gamalia fire against Josh Whale. I know people are talking about, saw the odds, I just couldn't believe it. You know, you've got Gamalia fire who's fairly inexperienced, good win against Bobby Jenkinson to win the title. And Josh Whale back at Super Bantam, you know, he drew with Gavin McDonnell in the same arena. He's never been down in his career so far. 77 fights. I know. And he's, he's game as a bagel. And he, he's up for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got Ryan Burnett on the card. Potential um, superstar Ryan Burnett. I think so. You know, I mean, we've got a plan now with Ryan Burnett. You know, we've got our foothold now, effectively, in the bantamweight division. You know, we've got Jamie McDonnell. We've got Stuart Hall against uh, Lee Haskins. I just won the purse before. I think it's a great fight. And I want Ryan Burnett to fight the winner of that fight. Um... There's a three-fight plan for Ryan now to box on July the 30th, then again in September, then again in December. And then he's ready to fight for the world title. Because of the way the dynamics of, of the sport are changing in regards to the shows, i.e. we really need a world title to be headlining most shows now moving forward from September the 1st. So I want to take Ryan Burnett to, dub, to Belfast when he's changing for a world title. And that will come in February or March next year because we have these three fights, he's ready for any of the champions. So I'm excited about Ryan Burnett. I think he's a great talent. I think he looks the part as well. And Dillian White, of course, on the card, who I just saw you share an interview as well, who just manages somehow to call out everybody, even like Dave Allen's manager, who was sitting in the crowd today. Um, and the good thing about working with Dillian White is he really will fight anyone. So, and it's really difficult to match him. You know, the world's gone mad at the moment with purses. You know, like we're speaking to heavyweights who are just like, uh, I want $100,000 to fight Dillian Martin in 10 rounds. It's like, mate. Would that the, be Aguilera by any chance? Yeah, yeah, Christine Aguilera. <laughs> um, but they're just, the world's gone mad and um, it's difficult to match Dillian Martin. But, you know, we'll, we're looking to do so for the 30th and then, and then move forward and win that British title. Sam Eggington returns to the card. Frankie Gavin returns to the card. Tommy Martin returns to the card as well. Um, Felix Cash, I think Jake Ball's going to be on as well. It's a stacked card. And as a promoter, it's the worst time in the world, the summer, because every fighter wants to get out and nick a holiday in August. So it's like, I think we've got 16 fights. And um, again, 
we will <laughs> probably do our bollocks on this one, but that's boxing. Roll with the punches. Hard question here. Was it frustrating for yourself that the Selby Josh Warrington fight wasn't made for this card? If you had your way and you could have waved the magic what, what, wand. Is that a wand? A wand. Yeah. Would you would you have made that fight? Yeah, I think it's a great fight. Um, but I do think, and, and you know, you're going to get fans who sort of turn around and say, oh, fighters have got to be ready for that fight. And things have got to be right for that fight. You know, we always plan that fight, Ellen Road. Mm. Spoke to the club. July and August is, is a non-starter for for that for a football club. And we looked at Headingley as well. And, you know, the stuff about the wedding, Josh Warrington's wedding, he's getting married, yeah. So he wasn't even going to fight in July or August. The opportunity come up to fight Highland, he chose to accept it. Would he have fought Selby on July the 30th? Probably not. Does that mean that he doesn't want to fight Selby? Of course not. In fact, you know, I've spoken to the Sanagars and we will sign the contract on the same terms that we discussed to fight him in November or December. But Lee is also chasing the winner of Santa Cruz against Frampton. So mm. we have to see how that plays out. You know, Lee's waiting to hear on, his, on a date for his next fight. So looks like that one could be in the States. But as far as Josh Warrington's concerned, he wants to fight Lee Selby. Of course he does. But things have got to be right. It's not like he's just this guy who has no value, doesn't put mums on seats, hasn't got any TV dates, and he's up for taking a fight where he wouldn't be 100% for. Um, and that's not just physically, that's mentally as well, and emotionally. It's a big, big risk this is when you dive balls deep into a fight like that and say, now we're gambling. But when you gamble, everything's got to be right. You've got to give yourself the best chance. So I know it's frustrating for fans, but here we have a fight against Highland, which, you know, Padjo said to me, you know, I'm going to beat this kid, don't you? And maybe if Josh Warrington gets beat, he turns around and says, I should take the Lee Selby fight. Um, but again, we know, and that's one of the reasons the card's so stacked here. You know, you can't keep going to, back to Leeds, saying we're going to do this, we're going to do this, without a quality card. So Highland's a great fight, the card is completely stacked, but we all know the desire for fans for Josh Warrington to fight Lee Selby. Mm -hmm. And listen, it might not be Lee Selby. You know, Josh is number two with the WBC, that's Gary Russell, very tough fight. You know, Lomachenko's moving up, the WBO looks like it's going to free up. You know, so there, there's options, but I just feel like the Selby fight, of course, is the one that makes sense. And, you know, if we can get that done for November, December, gen, gen, genuinely, we will sign that now. Um, I think it, it sort of frustrated Josh Warren a little bit, the fact that people have been so vocal on his case yeah, over course, the social yeah. media, that the world we live in Josh, the, the fact <clears throat> is, Josh wanted the fight, right? It was his dad and his training team who actually turned around and said, look, this isn't the right time for you. You know, you've got your wedding, you're not that well prepared. You know, are you, are you going to be 100% in this fight? Ask yourself that question. And if it's, no, I'm going to be 98%, you can't gamble in a fight like that because you're going to get beat. And look, we live in a world where the pressure is on for fighters and promoters and managers to make these fights. And that's good news for boxing because if there was no pressure, none of the fights would be getting made. You know? So he, if it was up to him, he would have taken the fight 100%. But he has to listen to the people around him that have got him into this position. You know, he's come from a small hall setup to fill in arenas in Leeds, winning British, Commonwealth, European. You know, he's, he's world ranked top five. You can't just spunk it up the wall because someone on social media says, you coward, you've got to take the fight while he's eating his pizza and knocking one out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got to make logical decisions. And that comes down to. All these things, you know, if it's Eubank Golovkin, if it's Brooke Vargas, there's a story behind all of them. It's not just a fighter shit himself and he doesn't want to fight him. Fighters don't shit themselves. Fighters want to fight everybody. That's what they do. But it's the teams around them, sometimes rightfully, sometimes wrongfully, who have to give them the right advice. And, and that is important and, uh, because you can't leave a fighter to make a decision without him getting the right advice because they will make the wrong decision. Because if you goad them, like people do, they will fight, you know. Mm. In fact, with all Josh Ryan and stuff, when we turned around and said, can't be Ellen Road and, you know, we're not sure it's the right time, and people started saying, oh, Josh, your bum's gone. He phoned up, I'm fighting him. I'm fighting Selby. And everyone said, yeah, but you're not going to be, you're not right to fight him now. Why don't you fight him? And, no, no, no. I said, why? Because 
someone called you out on Twitter. Is that what it's come down to? But like I said, that's why people have advisors, because mm -hmm. the fighters will fight and they will make poor decisions for their career because that's who they are, the fighters. Let's talk a little bit about Gennady Golovkin mm. v Chris Eubank Jr. Do you genuinely believe that Chris Eubank Jr. and English want the fight? Yes, I do, yeah. I mean, it's difficult for me because like, I spent a lot of yesterday working on the two fights and also spent a lot of yesterday just having a bit of a crack with people on Twitter and, and like some people going, I've, I've really got to Eddie Hearn and rattled him. I'm sort of sitting, like just to let you know the setup yesterday, I was sitting in my garden in the sun, on a sun lounger with my feet up. I think I had a, like a smoothie or something. I had a pad, I had a, a laptop. I was trying to make some fights and every now and again I'd go on Twitter and I think I had a few people there. I was going, look, look at this bloke, just put this, I'm gonna write this. And then some, I rattled him here. I was like, mate, and then you got this other bloke who set up a Mike Costello. I saw that. Like, I mean, how much of a helmet have you got to be, right? If you're gonna set up a fake account, at least pretend to be Justin Bieber or something like that. And no disrespect to my dear friend, Mike Costello, how can you set up a fake account and pretend to be an athletics and boxing correspondent He's a BBC? great commentator, though, to be honest. Mike Costello's probably he's, he's the best commentator, commentator in boxing. Yeah. Yeah, but what are these people doing? And it's like our official account for Mike Costello. And he's like saying, he's commenting on fights. How bad? as your life got to be, that you are seeing at home. It's like, right, what am I gonna to do today? Oh, I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna create a fake account for Mike Costello, boxing and athletics correspondent, and I'm gonna pretend that I'm him. And I'm gonna tweet people all day pretending I'm Mike Costello. Oh, bizarre. what a loser. Oh, I had to tell him. He said, oh, well, you're a fraud. I said, don't know, mate, you're a fraud. You're pretending to be someone else. That's a fraud. Anyway. So that was me yesterday having a laugh. And it's, it's frustrating because, because you're asking me the questions, mm -hmm. I tell you, now when you ask me after the Joshua fight, Gennady Golovkin against Chris Eubank, what's the situation? I think this fight needs to get done in 48 hours, and I think it will. Now, obviously, a week later, whoa, oh, Hearn, you wanker. You said it would be 48 hours, you liar. But what, like, what's but the hold-up, though? The hold-up is, it's very, very complicated. And actually, when you've got contracts coming through, you know, you've got a contract with Matchroom and Chris Eubank Jr. You've got a contract with Sky Sports for that particular fight. You've got a contract with HBO. You've got a contract with Gennady Golovkin. And there's three or four contracts to draft. And these, these contracts go backwards and forwards with multiple changes and negotiations on so many different points. International TV, sponsors on the ring mat, the press conferences, drug testing. Um, hotel rooms, flights, gloves, ring size, officials. Have people been yeah, accommodating look, to try not, and make the fight happen? Uh, at no point have, and this, this is over the last two weeks, has anything come back that has made me think this fight won't happen? Okay? So, again, we're on the fourth or fifth redraft of the contract. Now, there might come a time where everybody agrees to everybody's demands, yeah. and they're, they're small things at the moment. So it makes me feel like it will get done. Mm. That is put in front of someone and someone says, no, I'm not taking a fight. Now that can happen, but I can't see how after everything that's been said and everything that people have told me and the desire that people have shown to make this fight, how that is going to happen. I can't see it. It no. might do, I, you know, and maybe I'm too positive. Maybe I should start throwing some negativity in there. So in fact, I will do. I'm not sure whether this fight's gonna get made. It's 50-50. But that's not me telling you the truth. The truth is, I believe the fight will get made. And I, I believe it will get made this week. But again, on Friday, if there's no announcement, don't start tweeting me saying that I'm a fraud and I'm a liar. I'm just telling you what I think, right? Things can change. Yeah. People can change their mind on certain things that can disrupt a contract. It, it's very, very complicated. Then you've got the Brooke Vargas situation. Who's gonna come to this? Mm. Brooke Vargas, we've obviously seen some tweets between Vargas and Brooke yeah. over the last few days. Yeah. What, where do we stand at this moment okay, in time this is, with this the is, Vargas? Again, yeah. I'll try and make it as simple as, as possible. Please do. Vargas wants an absolute fortune to come to the UK and fight Kel Brook. I don't blame him. I would too. You come in to fight the number one welterweight in the world, but to be quite honest with you, no one wants to fight. Right? In order to put that money up for Vargas, Kel Brook has to take a smaller end. 
In fact, probably less than he should be making for this fight. But it's half a gamble. You know, it's to put yourself in a position where it's not just me and others saying he's number one in welterweight in the world. He's the unified champ, okay? But everything's got to be right. You can't just expect a fighter to go, oh, do you know what, pay him some more, fucking don't worry about me, I'll box for nothing, because the fans want the fight. This is a guy who's built himself into a world, world champion. You've got to get well paid. But he's, he's taking small money for this fight because he wants the fight. He wants to be a unified champ and we believe he'll win. Mm -hmm. So, when we spoke to, to Top Rank originally, you have to understand as well, this contract, when, you, when we contract for a fight, a provision of services agreement between Matrim and Top Rank, okay? Matrim representing Kell Brook, Top Rank representing Jesse Vargas. So what will happen is you would contract, the fighter would, uh, sorry, the, the top rank would go to Jesse Vargas, say, look, this is the terms, there's your bout agreement, sign your bout agreement. They have done that. And Jesse Vargas has signed a contract with top rank, nothing to do with our central contract, saying he will fight Kell Brook on the is terms that, that have been discussed. He's saying that he's yeah, yeah, yeah. signed the he's contract. He's not lying, but he's not, you know, he has signed a bout agreement with top rank, but it's irrelevant because the provision of services central agreement has not been signed or agreed with top rank and matchroom because it's too much money, quite simply. And last week, through the Brexit, the dollar rate swings about 12, 13%. I think you're talking about a quarter of a million dollar swing for us through that happening. And that has opened our legs and kicked us straight in the bollocks. So, we negotiating with, with uh, top rank over the weekend and Bob Aaron. We are now in a position where we have a number and a package that we are happy to progress with. And I might start hearing people say, oh, well, I bet it's a shit offer. Let me tell you, it's over $2 million. Vargas's last purse against Tim Bradley was $600,000. He's going to earn three times as much to fight Kell Brook. So don't let me hear people say, oh, I bet you've offered him shit money. That's how much he's offered. Much more than Kell Brook will make in the fight, right? So wait one second, you're off. Just in mid-flow, all right? <laughs> Speak to you in a bit. I shall see you soon. He's been waiting, he's been waiting here about 10 <laughs> minutes. Who's that, right? Pedro? <laughs> What's this damn thing, eh? What? I was gonna say, let's go to Leeds, <laughs> fight Josh Warrington. <laughs> I got a game plan right here. A load of money. Easy work. <laughs> That's actually, have you been, have you been practicing oh, that? It's all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Let it go. <laughs> oh, was I was supposed to mention it. You were to team me up. You just kicked me oh, under the table or something like that. Conor McGregor style. Just straight take a mic and just slag it through. <laughs> See you soon. All right, mate. I'll speak all to right. you in a week. See you soon. soon. Yeah, so <laughs> I was wondering who it was. Highland <laughs> or what? That's actually a very good impersonation. Um, so with Vargas, yeah, so that's the situation. He has the offer, what we need to make the fight happen. The other delay is, when's that fight going? Now you've got two, what I would call super fights. One in September, one in October. Does the Brook fight go October the 8th? Does the Golovkin fight go then? Or does Golovkin go September the 10th at the 02? All these things will evolve this week. So with Vargas, he's not lying when he says he's agreed. He has agreed, but we haven't agreed. We haven't agreed with top rank what, what the deal is. So now he has a deal in place for a huge amount of money, and I think he'll take the fight. I, I do, I think he'll take the fight. And now we're at a level where I can make sure Kell Brook is well looked after with upside. And because again, Kell Brook's not like some bloke who's Commonwealth champion, who's getting a shot at the world title. He's the number one world weight in the world. And if you, if you think I'm talking shit, go and look at the Ring Magazine ratings, because they're supposed to be the Bible of boxing. So, but no one wants to fight him. No one wants to fight him, because he's so good. And again, people are oh, you Hearn's talking shit. I'm telling you, that is the situation. Why do you think we've got to pay Vargas so much money? We'll fight Vargas in America. They ain't got the money. America's down. When you look at the sort of the names out there, if the Vargas fight doesn't come off, what, so we've what got will plenty of backup plans. We're not stupid. No, no we're not I'm, sitting I'm there not saying no. You are, but what no, would you, well, you're what would, right. What would you look but, at? But we'd look at other fighters like Berto, like Lamont Peterson, and of course we want the Thurman fight. 
you know, I spoke to Heyman's guy, I said, look, we'll take the Furman fight. You know, Tim Bradley's not going to fight to the end of the year. He's another one. But, you know, I, I quite like the Peterson and Berto fights, but it's not Jesse Vargas. This is a fight between two spunky kids who are world champions. You saw them on social media last night. It's not, you know, then people start t- tweeting me, oh, it's obviously a put-up, these tweets. It's like, no, mate, they're just slagging each other off. They want to fight each other. But again, it goes back to everything's got to be right. You know, I think Vargas has an offer that is a wonderful offer for him. And it's a unification fight. And he ain't going to earn anything like this or being in a unification fight of this magnitude. And you know what? Kel Brook needs this fight as well. Because none of the other champions want to do it. And finally, we've found someone with a big set of balls in Jesse Vargas that will come and will fight. And you know what? He'll put up a great fight. And it will be an absolute barn burner. But Kel Brook is the best. But it is frustrating. Kel's fa- fairly pissed off. He wants to sign the fight. But it's got to be the right deal. He's not going to sign the fight for a couple of hundred grand. Do you know what I mean? He could make that. He made much more than that fighting Kevin Bizier. So fans have got to understand that Brook's going to take the small end here to get the fight that is right for his career. Okay? Um, and Vargas is going to earn a lot of money, but he deserves it. He's world champion, he's travelling. But it's just a case of marrying it all up so that everyone's happy. So Kel's all right, he, want, he wants the date. He wants to get his teeth into training. And I want to bring Vargas over for the press conference, because they're going to go at it, them two. You can and, tell the dislike's real. Yeah, you, you it is, because can. Vargas has been to- doing a lot of talking. And in the end, Kel Brook yesterday says, do you know what, I'm going to tweet him back. It's been, like, it's been going on like this for two or three weeks. I said, do it. So he said, stop talking shit. There's your offer. Now you can sign your contract because now it's agreed if top rank want to agree that deal. But I don't see why they won't and I believe they will. And, and again, I might be wrong. But I think that fight will get made and I think it will get made this week. Just coming back to the Golovkin-Eubank situation, if that fight isn't made, does it make your job as a promoter harder when you're trying to sell to the public, say, Eubank next defence yeah, of the British? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah it does. Because it's anticipation, isn't it? So, but again, I guess it's because you've got so much access to these fighters and, and, and promoters and managers, mm. and we talk so much, mm. that that's why I'm saying about the Berto fight or the Peterson fight. Two good fights for Kel Brook, yet if we make them now, people will probably say, oh, rubbish, what about Vargas? Because we've built that up, we've spoke about it. You know, people will say to me, well, don't speak about it. I'm a fucking promoter. How do you sort what do you want me to say? You're it. asking me a question about a fight. Oh, that'd be a great IFL interview. Eddie, any updates on Golovkin Eubank? None at all. <laughs> Can't say. Can't. I'm not going to tell you anything. That's blinded. <laughs> you know, so... But you know the demand for fights. I mean, I, you know, I look on my Twitter. Boom, refresh. Any news on Brooke Vargas? Any news on Brooke Vargas? Please make Golovkin Eubank. Any news? You said 48 hours. What's happening with this? What's that? So everybody wants it. So it does mo- motivate me to get it done. Mm. You know, when people say to me, you won't make these fights because you are just shit. That's what you are, Hearn. I just like it and I go, when I make this fight, <laughs> make sure you give me a Twitter blowjob. You know what I mean? It's, I know you haven't had Golovkin on one of your shows before, mm. but you know that you've had dealings with him and his yeah. team about potential fights. Is he quite, are they quite easy to deal with? Are they yeah, quite straightforward? Yeah, they are because they've never been spoiled and they've never, they've always, Negotiations have always been difficult for Gennady Golovkin. You know, um, we I'd like to think we're easy to deal with, mm-hmm. and I, I do believe that. Um, we just, you know, people come back to talking about accountancy and stuff like that. The numbers have to work. You can't, you know, someone, someone else tweeted me, sorry to keep referring to tweets, and said, so why don't you just pay them more, both, both of them more, and get it done? It's like, well, that kind of defeats the object of this thing called business that we're in. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a philanthropist. It's not just a case of, let's just go to the pot. There's another 200. There's another 200. Sign. It doesn't work. Then you defeat the object. Winning for me is all about doing good business. Winning for the fighters is all about winning in the ring. Winning for you is all about getting the most views. If you're not winning or trying to win, what are you fucking doing? You know, if you decide I'm not going to skip a press conference today and lay in bed all day, you're a loser. That's right. If I just turn around and go, oh, I can't be asked to make the right deal, yeah, there's another half a million, I'm a loser because it's the wrong ethics of business. And sorry to bore you with that, but that's what I'm all about. That's my way of winning, is to make good business and to make my business and company work and provide for my fighters. 
But everybody's got to be happy. And it's, that's the difficult thing with making big fights, is making sure that everybody's, it's finding the middle ground. When someone says, we want VADA testing, and someone says, no, 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 it has to be WADA testing. And someone says, yeah, but we want the Adams whereabouts scheme. And I'm thinking, fucking hell. And he's like, no, I'm not backing down. Well, I'm not backing down on this. I'm thinking, are we really going to lose this fight over which agency does the drug testing? You know, or, uh, you know, it might be comps at ringside. We want 50 VIP. Well, we're not giving you 50 VIP. Well, then we're not fighting. Oh, my God. You know, this is what you're dealing with every day. Well, you can have 40. Well, I want 45. Well, then that fuck off. Just, right, fight's off. It's like, no, what, over five tickets? I'll buy them tickets. Do you know There's what I mean? so many great it, questions I want to ask. Yeah, from but, that, that but fans, fans, fans have got to understand. It's not, what's the hold up? We don't, why, why is this fight not happening? Because that is what you're going back on. Sponsorship of the ring. Who gets what logos where? We want our logos there. Well, you can't have them there. Well, then we're not fighting. You know, HBO wants so many ring positions. Well, they can't have them. Well, they won't take it, and therefore the fight's off. This is, this is what you deal with as a promoter. I'm not moaning about it, it's just what happens. Mm. But fans just have to understand. It's not as simple as, do you want the fight? There's a million quid. Sign that. Bosh. Announce. I wish it was, because my job would be so much easier. <laughs> but it's not. So this, this is a massive card. This will be your last show now before the sort of summer break. Season, if season you like. Yeah, the break. season used to run to the end of June. September the 1st but we've thrown this one on July the 30th um, and then September you know, a lot of people are asking me about Burns about Bellew um, and the answer is once these two shows get done we will mold our schedule from there so Bellew looks like could be October the 1st or the 15th Ricky Burns again will fit in those, those dates as well um, September the 10th could be Golovkin against Eubank. September 17th, we'll have a world title fight abroad um, with, with a fighter, which we'll announce probably hopefully tomorrow. When's Hall Haskins? That could land on September the 10th, or it could land on the Brook card on October the 8th, but the deadline is the end of September. Mm -hmm. So unless the Sanagars and Lee Haskins agree to go on the 8th, or we might do it in Newcastle. Any news on Joshua? No, I mean, just resting right now. I think Josh will be out November, December. Um, we're going to be doing a sh an international show abroad on November the 12th, which hopefully will be announced soon. I'm going to start saying soon rather than in the next. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, November, and then October 22nd will be in Birmingham. That'll be KFI, hopefully in a world title fight, Gavin against Eggington as well. Um, yeah, and... July the 6th, I think, or 7th, we can announce this other Brit uh, changing for a world title, which will probably be on September the 10th as well, whatever show that'll be. So it's, it's difficult at the moment, just until we get those two shows cemented. Listen, we might not make one of them. Golovkin Eubank might fall through and, and Brooke Vargas won't. How confident are you that you, you can make one of them this week, oh. potentially? Do you think you could sign uh, off on it? Uh, I don't want to say 100% because I'll just open myself up, but 100%. So <laughs> fuck you all. <laughs> so no, but I, I really believe one of those, I believe both fights will get made this week, but that's maybe just because I'm a positive person. Mm. Maybe I'm deluded, but that's as it stands now, with a common sense head on, if everybody can show common sense, both fights will get made this week. But you have got senior. I didn't want to bring but, him up too much. But, but to be honest with you... What's he like to deal with in negotiations? Um, sometimes... I've lost my rag with him a couple of times. Sometimes, I don't mean this is a disrespectful way, sometimes he has to be told, mm. you know, no. And this is not on, this is not happening. You know, there's been a few times where I've stood up and said, right, fuck it, that's it. I want to... You know, you've got to understand, it's not... This... The fighting's the fighting. That's the tough bit. But getting the deal over the line, it ain't easy. You know, it's, you've got a guy, Tom Loughlin, who's in LA, who's eight hours behind. It's not mm. a case of, you know, it's up all night. It's redrafting contracts. It's thinking. It's speaking to people. It's, it's pacifying people. It's keeping people happy. It's, and it, it fucking drives you mental. And it really does drain you. 
So at what point do I turn around and say, you know what, that's it. I ain't doing it anymore. So I'm moving on to another fight. Mm. And you know, there's been a couple of conversations like that, but it's always come back to, no, no, okay, okay, make the fight. And they believe they're gonna win the fight. They do, and that's why they're taking the fight. To, because they believe they'll win the fight. And that's the only reason they're taking the fight. Yeah, they're gonna make money. But if they didn't think they'd win, they wouldn't even consider this fight. So, and, and Brooke, Var Brooke Vargas is just the right fight for both. You know, you, got, you can pick up two belts and you can be in a real dominant position in a 147 pound division. It's just frustrating for Kel that you have to pay these guys so much money. And there isn't guys, you know, it's not as if the Americans are even saying, here's a load of money and come and fight us. Because they don't want to fight him. Danny Garcia doesn't want to fight Kel Brook. We've offered him millions. I said, okay, we'll come to you. Uh, no. All right, Thurman, make us an offer. We'll come to America if you want it. Um, yeah, maybe we're gonna maybe do the rematch and then, you know, but then if Kel picks up the WBO in the IBF, they can't ignore him. And I think sometimes you need the right fighter to, not just to gel in the ring, but to gel outside of the ring. And I think that with Vargas and Brook, you've got that. You have think, a little bit of spice. Yeah. And I think there's not many fighters that Kel's really going to have that relationship with. Amir is, of course, one. But Vargas, I think he's the guy. And, you know, I want to see Kel win every belt in the division. Um, but again, you know, he's in a position where he's probably going to have to take less money than he'd like. But if you believe in yourself and you're up for gambling, this is the right fight. Do so I'm actually that... leaving here to see him now. You're going you know, from now to yeah, see Kel? Yeah, to, to go for everything. You know, how does his deal look in relation to the deal that's been offered to Vargas? You know, um, so does it sell out? Do we go Bramall Lane? Do we go Sheffield Arena? How many buys does it do? Mm. You know, these are all things to consider because you will be gambling and you, you know, you have to back yourself. With that, with the money that Vargas is obviously demanding mm. and rightly so, and with Kel Brook's purse, does that sort of affect the way you plan the rest of the card, if you like? Sort of in uh, terms of the no, fights because available. You, you know, you're going to have to. We, we have a budget in place for the undercard, mm. and the pay per view budgets for undercards have risen considerably over the last few years because people want more value. So that's not really going to affect it. The only thing that affects it is there isn't really any money for me in this fight. And that's being straight up honest. Mm. So, but if I do the Golovkin fight, there will be. So if Kelbrook wants a guarantee and I'm at risk, the Golovkin fight might ease the pain. Do you know what I mean? And that's just being straight up. So, but, you know, a pay-per-view card is where the fighters get paid well and it's very important to our business. Mm. So if I'm doing a pay-per-view fight and I'm losing money, that's bad business. But I will do it for Kel Brook. You would generally put a pay-per-view on and not, not make the, the amount of profit that you say you've made on uh, last pay-per-view. Make no profit and lose money. It's a terrible model to do a pay-per-view show and lose money. You're, an, you're actually an idiot for doing it. But I could do it with that fight, yeah. But I believe it's a great fight. I believe it will do good numbers. And more importantly, I believe Kelbrook will win. Are you going to the gym or are you going to Kelbrook's house? I'm going to his house. But the thing is with Kelbrook as well, we've got deep investment in Kelbrook. You know, I've never made a bean out of Kelbrook. I overpaid him for the Bizier fight. I overpaid him for the Frankie Gavin fight. I overpaid him for the Jojo Dan fight. Reason being, he's the best in the world. That's what he deserves. So I ain't bailing out now. You know, I want this. I want him to beat Thurman. I want him to beat Garcia. I want him to beat Amir Khan. But this is a difficult situation. And somehow, we've got to get it over the line. Fingers crossed today will be the day we get some good news. I hope everything goes well with Kel. Cheers, Thank man. you for answering my questions and oh, just spilling on so, I know, so yeah, good. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, well, I, thought, I thought I just—it's difficult on social because you can only write so much on social media, and it's like sometimes you want the fans to just come and spend a day with me, and I bet at the end of it they'll go fuck me. You Is know? that something we could do? Maybe get three or four fans to come and spend a day with you one day on random. Absolutely Would not. That's something you'd be up Absolutely for. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go. He looks right, like man. he's coming to talk business, yeah, so I'm going to yeah, leave yeah, you go. Right. See you later, mate. Cheers,